go to Florida, then you come all came home for two days, and then you come to Colorado. Oh, cool. <laughs> Trying to do it all in one. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Have a roll call, please. Mr. Bachman? Here. Henning? Here. Gorman? Here. Merkel? Here. Kelly? Here. Lieberman? Here. Stevens? Here. And I believe we're going to see a presentation from Elaine on Meadowbrook. Good evening. Um, tonight I'm just going to present to you um, what we've seen at Meadowbrook uh, since our changes as of July 31st uh, with the golf and banquet operations. Go ahead with the next slide. So just to recap, um, the changes for this year, we did add a grab-and-go type concessions uh, in the pro shop. So anytime that the pro shop's open, uh, golfers can get um, beverages as well as snacks, and that opened on April 1st of this year. With the banquet side, um, the city-operated snack bar, which used to be the grill, opened on April 29th. Um, the city held, uh, took over the liquor license, but Currently, we are still operating under the management agreement uh, with the Grill uh, by Heritage liquor license. Uh, on July 19th, we were informed that the Department of Taxation has recommended to the Division of Liquor that they proceed with the <laughs> permit transfer. So it has been a slow process, but I'm glad that we have been able to operate under that management agreement. Uh, also, we had hired the event planner with um, allowing outside caters, which seemed to prove very, uh, be very beneficial to uh, renters. In the first th few months, we've been working out the kinks, um, just making adjustments as needed, mostly with the software system. We haven't necessarily changed hours or anything, but um, we have... Uh, pretty much been um, running smoothly here the last couple of months. Next slide. Just to give a breakdown a little of the financials, uh, the grab and go pro shop that I spoke about, the net, uh, you have the net revenues for when it has been open April through July. This is with um, the cost to purchase the snacks and drinks as, um, as well as the revenue that we have taken in. With the snack bars, um, that has been open since April. Uh, you see that um, with May, we were a little bit slower. I think it was just getting people to know, hey, we are open, um, come upstairs, uh, because it was, I think in previous years, people didn't necessarily know hours and things like that. But then um, in June and July, we have run strong. So we have been in the black uh, by over 2,000. Um, with staff wages, as well as with the cost of goods and any sort of extra we may have. You know, we may cook five extra hot dogs and have to throw those away. That's accounted as well, so that waste. Um, the, uh, let's see here. So just to let you know that we are open with the snack bar Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Sunday from 9 to 5. So we have kept those consistent throughout the year. We plan on kind of looking at them um, once we get into September, possibly next year. But we really wanted to tell the customers, hey, we're open, we're consistent. The only time we've really closed is when um, golf operations have closed. So... We did start uh, with, uh, because we don't have, we don't cook any food besides hot dogs and sausages from the roller grill, um, we did in the beginning start offering salads and sandwiches from Rich Taste Catering, but they since stopped their wholesale operation because their catering has taken off. So um, we are now usually, at, we're now utilizing Gem City Market, which again, seems to prove beneficial that people do like um, to have the option of a sandwich or a salad after, mostly after um, the ladies golf leagues, we seem to sell well. Go ahead with the next slide. 
And now on to the financials for um, the banquet side. So this is the facility rental as well as the bar operations um, when somebody for an event wants to have um, a alcohol or a bar there. So you can see uh, with that um, how many events we had, how many guests uh, were there during that month, and uh, the net revenue. And I'll speak what's into, um, what goes into calculating the net revenue here momentarily. But then I'd also like to show you the golf outings um, that we do have running again. With this, I do have to say that alcohol has really helped us with that banquet side. Um, because of the markup, it, it has proved beneficial. Um, we didn't have a prom. We didn't serve alcohol at prom. Um, yeah, no, they they did not. Uh, they did not like that too much. Um, but also, usually baby showers, we don't do a lot of alcohol sales on those either. So, um, but we did. Uh, we brought to you in May that uh, we had we asked to increase the rental pricing, and that was uh, May fifth of this year. And just to let you know, we don't feel we feel that we've still stayed steady with the number of events that we booked because we've had since uh, from April fifth to July thirty first, we've had eleven bookings at the higher rate, and three of those being uh, full facility rentals. And in addition to those 11, we also have uh, three rentals who booked the day before so they could set up everything. So 14 total book bookings, I think we're doing well, and I don't think that uh, price increase really deterred anybody from uh, booking. If you look, um, the next bullet is event uh, report review. You also have in front of you uh, a rental, an example rental report. This is kind of what I want to show you to um, explain how we come up with the net revenue. Um, so with this is an example of a class reunion. Anything in yellow on this report is what we plug in specifically for the report so we can uh, calculate the numbers. So you can see with the revenue at the top, uh, we have the rate, any discounts that may be given, uh, any, and other, any other revenue, that can be from alcohol or beverage revenue. Um, some outings we have provided um, hot dogs and chips at the turn, as well as linens and some different things like that. So um, then you go down to the expenditures. We break out for each personnel. So we do account for uh, the event manager, Amanda's time. Uh, for the event. So you can see that not only are her wages include, but included, but um, the any sort of health and dental insurance, pension, workers' comp, Medicare. Then you can see at least for this particular event, we also had a bartender as well as um, a laborer and a custodian. So you um, so again, we do pension, workers' comp, we try to include pretty much anything, not just the basic wages with this. So you can see at the bottom before that gray line um, that for this particular program, the total personnel costs were $331.62. The utilities are a little bit not quite as um, black and white. The utilities are calculated where we take the budgeted amount that we have for utilities for Meadowbrook. We say that um, out of, and then we divide it for, uh, per day for the year. Then we say that for the utilities, 65% of utilities are used for banquet events. The rest is used either for the snack operation, for pro shop, those type things. And then we break that percent down even further depending on what type of event it is. So this is actually where you see the 4% there. It actually, um, you can put multiple percentages in there depending on if it's a full facility rental where they use the locker rooms downstairs as well as all upstairs or if they just use the fireplace room, which is our smallest room, that's gonna have less utilities. And you can see the same as uh, can be said for the overhead and direct cost. Again, the total budgeted amount 
times we're saying 65% is used for uh, banquet operations, and again, percentage based on the type of event. And included in this is any um, office supplies, janitorial facility supplies, uh, contractual for somebody to come in and um, you know fix uh, the a uh, HVAC unit and that kind of thing. So um, that's how we kind of, again, it's not exact because it would be very hard to find for every single event an exact amount, but it does at least account for some of it. And I do believe we do have a close number with that. Then you get down, uh, we're still in expenditures, alcohol purchases, other purchases that may be made for that particular program. And then on the last page, um, you do see the total revenue for the program. So again, we do this for every event and every golf outing. So we do um, have uh, for each month broken down and then uh, compile them for the month. So then we have an outlook on the month. And that those were the uh, facility, those were the net revenues you saw earlier. Um, any questions about that before I move on? I just have one question. Yes. So I, I like this. I think you tried to cover all the expenses, um, especially that's kind of hard to do but um, so is this loaded into a spreadsheet that we can see like month to date year to date are all these figures you know march across the spreadsheet um, right now they're in um, they're separated by each month which definitely could be then compiled into a um, year to date so then you could see that across. I just think it'd be interesting to see, you know, we could see at the end of the year Most where we were. The other thing that um, I'd like to, see, the only other thing I would like to see is to have us um, kind of um, set it up against break even. Because, you know, I know we have a budget and I'm sure we'll do fine on the budget, but I'd like to see if we're you know how much money we're actually putting into it you know are we going to make money on this are we ever going to be in the black we just I well mean, and, I mean, and this we, is encouraging but right and it is based on per event um which at the end you know each month we do have a percentage of okay you know our recovery rate saying how much you know we spent how much we um earned uh, it, it, again, I think sometimes monthly it's a little difficult because um, the revenue doesn't necessarily come in at the same, you know, during the same time uh, when, uh, say, we book an event for 2023, it's actually brought in at 2022. Um, so it is a little difficult, but uh, we do have those numbers as well. We just wanted to, this is what we were using when we came to you saying, hey, we need to raise rental rates. <laughs> because unless they were you know, purchasing alcohol, we were losing. So that's where at least per event we have it. But you're right as far as when we're looking at um, the big purchases you know, like uh, that we're doing for the building, those aren't necessarily included in this. You know, we, uh, I think this is this is exactly what I wanted to see. But I think when we get phone calls from people or, or comments, you know, like you see, they're always, you know, how much are you subsidizing? You know, they don't care about the little event. They're talking about, you know, how much money per year is is the city subsidizing? Sure, and we'll talk a little yeah. bit more about that okay. coming up here okay. as well. So, I like the fact that you did the cost analysis because I feel like that shows the potential revenue too, and the expenditures. And I think that would help a breakdown per month to month. Yes, maybe you don't have your total monthly, but you can compare it to last month, mm -hmm. this month, next month, and you can kind of give a analysis breakdown from the month to month and see where you're at there. Very but much. I like the breakdown. I think it's a great way to figure out your profit and loss and moving forward um, when you do look at the next slide um, the we uh, showing the facility rental revenues as far as just the rental goes this isn't including anything else this is somebody coming saying okay I want to book the ballroom here's my however many dollars uh, you can definitely see in 2022 we have 
increase bookings. Um, and again, this is January 1st through July 31st. That doesn't necessarily mean that the uh, rental was in 2022 when it was collected. It could be in 2023, but um, this just shows, I believe, that uh, the right decision was made by um, allowing outside caters. One question. So, yes. Are those numbers for 2020 and 2021 for the total year or for the same time period? To same time on? period, just as through uh, January through January 1st through July 31st. Um, possibly add a column for what we what you might have had for 2020 and 2021 and 2022 as it moves forward so we can see how the numbers are comparing as far as additional revenues coming in. Sure. And I do plan on bringing this back to you once we have everything so we have a year to date to see it all, you know, um, all together. But we certainly, we certainly can do that. Well, I mean, I like the idea from the standpoint you're saying 2021 and 2020 is the fact that at this point we've almost doubled the amount that you've seen as far as revenues from last year. Yes, yeah. As far as uh, rental revenues go, yes, for rental fees. Because I think we are, um, we are seeing a lot more of the baby showers, bridal showers, birthday parties, maybe that um, didn't, the smaller events that didn't necessarily benefit a catering company just to do, you know, but um, we definitely see the benefit and we love seeing those people in there. There was no past incentive for someone to do something. Right, right. I also love to see the consistency. You said consistency, and I think that's the key to success with the food items, you know, the pro shop, the snack bar, it's consistency. It, we've never had a consistency before. And I think that's very important. And when I tell residents about subsidizing, you know, here's the deal. This is new for us. We can't really have a projection yet. We will here, you know, by fall, right. what's going on. And maybe we can compare what maybe Adrian and Heritage did with the catering versus since we've opened it up to caters. I mean, that would be a nice feature to see what was done and what is now with the different caters and how much more revenue that brings too. Okay, definitely. Next slide. Uh, we're gonna move on to golf now, kind of switch from the banquet to the golf side as far as revenues go. Um, you can see that uh, we are um, dipping a little bit below 2021, um, but we're even uh, greater than 2020, which was a great year. Um, but we do see that uh, I do track the weather, basically how many days uh, weather impacted uh, golf operations, because that does matter. Uh, through July 31st, uh, so it would have been April through July 31st in 2021, we had 25 days that impacted, uh, were impacted by weather that's either below 45 or above 90 or it's raining and we had to close the golf course. Um, so we had 25 days in 2021 and 32 days in 2022. So that could, you know, I mean, we may account for some of it. I don't think all of it necessarily, but... Um, we may see a little bit of that. And if you go to the next slide, you will see um, the breakdown of the revenues for the golf side by type. So you have the green fees, the carts, the passes. Uh, we're actually up in simulators and the miscellaneous. Um, the miscellaneous does include, like we did have... Um, North Dayton Golf Academy do club sales at one time. So that's where the miscellaneous was up. And now I think we see it um, up because of our concession operations that's included in those golf operations. So I'll be excited to see um, by the end of the year where we're sitting. Do you know rough amount for the simulators? Yes, I do. Um, in 2020, uh, we had almost uh, 15,000. 14,925. In 2021, we had 9,927. And I think that was big because we do have our, we um, have great showing at our winter simulator leagues, and we weren't able to do those in 2021 because of COVID. Um, but in 2022, we're at 15,295. 
20 was 15,000 for the year or just as of July? Just as of July. <laughs> about sound system uh -huh. is that in the budget yes for sound i just from the I, event that we just had i am very very excited um i will um actually hope to be bringing you um that uh quote uh here next next meeting so i'm very very excited with that i think that's gonna really um help with events so what's Um, yeah, I don't remember if we bought them. I think, I do think we bought them out, right? I don't think that we, you know, there was the, what, it was a capital purchase. Oh, was it? Okay. That, okay. Then. But Kenny, I think you're right. It was about 40, I remember about 40,000 for each. Okay. It seems so like 82 ish. So we're like for the year for 20 and 21, do you know what they made for the year? Um, I, I do not have those numbers on me right now. I certainly can get them to you. I just wanted to see where we were on that. And those, I believe, opened at the beginning of 19. Um, so I can get you 19 numbers as well okay. so that you can kind of see where we're sitting with those simulators since they're relatively new. Thank you. So we can pull that information together and get it out tomorrow. Yeah. I'll send it Most out certainly. tomorrow afternoon. The way I would guess that, you know, this is half a year, so I would, you know, it may not be exactly half, but I would say, you know, if you double these, I would say we would be close to a year. And then, what's, and then if you could find out, like, the lifespan on them. Sure. Because I've been seeing um, the North Dayton place advertising that they're getting new simulators that are state-of-the-art, nowhere else in Ohio has them. So I wondered, I was going to actually bring that up tonight during city manager's comments, but I'll do it now. I, I think it's something that, yeah, we should maybe pay attention to. Um, I just wondered, like, will, ours, will there be a need for ours still, and will the community still support them? So. Okay, sure. Can get those numbers to you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. We still have legs on the simulator, don't we? They still have what? Legs. Legs? Legs. Legs, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yes, we still do. And uh, we run a fall league that usually starts late October. Uh, and then we have the winter league. And this year we are seeing some uh, during rain, which we really, we tried to push that before, which we didn't get so much, but we are seeing some. Well, you know, on the winter leagues this year too, we might think about what we're going to do different since we have the liquor license and That's the beer right. and the food and stuff. Right. So that should be, we, sh we might be able to yeah. do a little better. Yeah, on the one time, yeah, when I played the league or the simulator last year, there was nothing that uh, they didn't, it was a like weird in-between period of, us taking over the license and, and heritage not being there, so it kind of a, was like a weird time. So yeah, I get there and uh, and it's like no beer, like it's gonna be a long golf outing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah, I think I think that all, I think no, I think we get that going as far as like kind of mini catering down there, like it was originally intended to. I think that'll just pique a little more interest in it. And hopefully, maybe we can get more groups and things like that yeah. down there it, as well. It, with it's that. still new. Mm -hmm. I mean, more, uh, I've seen a couple of the municipal owned courses in the area have, have talked about, have added them over the last couple of years, shortly after we did. Um, it's, it's still relatively new technology for like, I mean, outside of like big cities or places like mm -hmm. they kind of have like an indoor top golf. So I think just as more and more people, you know, can't latch on to it there i think just we're going to see an overall increase of it and i think yeah just you know if we keep uh obviously we have with like online bookings and all that i mean i you know we get you get the email list from that so you know i think just continuing the marketing push push for it Definitely. is there a marketing strategy for the simulators um 
Not, um, I'd like to revamp it come uh, now that things have changed with the liquor license. We really did when uh, things started up with the simulators, offering different deals, but it didn't, it was, it was difficult um, to coordinate all that with the on-site caterers. So um, I'm excited to kind of get with Jack on that and um, get that figured out. Okay, next slide. Uh, just to show you golf rounds, um, you have the total rounds, uh, league rounds, paid rounds, and outing rounds. Um, so the league paid and outing rounds are all within the total rounds. You, um, we do do if do do, do. Um, with the total rounds. We have the paid rounds, which is somebody who's just coming in and paying a greens fee and a cart fee. Cart fee. Things that aren't included in those paid rounds are the ones who have buy, bought passes, so we don't count that as a paid round. As well as we still, it's been a few years, uh, but we still have with uh, buy golf for half. Um, we're still running out that contract with them, uh, where we got advertising for. Um, so many golf rounds. So, you know, hope, uh, we have not renewed that. We're just kind of waiting for that to come out. So those are included. Those aren't included in the paid rounds as well. Okay, next slide. Um, going on to um, expenditures, uh, you can see that the largest expense uh, that we have are the wage and benefits. And uh, just to break it down. Uh, we do have 60% of the total budget in golf and 35 in uh, banquet. So it is, and again, with, you've seen labor costs that, you know, we just had a discussion with uh, possibly what we're going to do with seasonals next year, you know, without wages. So you can see that that is um, our largest expense. Included in the expenditures is about 31000 as a startup expense for banquet. So that included um, the buyout of Adrian's liquor license, as well as some um, equipment uh, setting up Amanda's office, like the computer, or the printer. Um, so that roughly uh, went to about uh, the legal fees. Forgot about those the legal fees. So that came to about thirty-one thousand that we won't necessarily see next year. Um, so with the recovery rate uh, in 2021, we were at 80%. So, uh, Mayor, this is what you're kind of talking about with, okay, where are we sitting as far as um, are we ever going to be in the black type of a thing. Right now, as of July 31st uh, in 2022, we are um, at 73%, and that's not including those startup expenses. Uh, with expenditures, we also are um, utilizing our advertising line item uh, very well this year. We are trying to get out that we are, um, the changes that have been made and the changes that are going to be made. Uh, so we're working on new pamphlets, um, updated signage, as well as booth displays for, um, for bridal shows. Uh, those seem to really help, um, and Amanda, thank goodness for her knowledge. Um, so we're really getting uh, that set up. Our first, we're going to go to our first one in September, um, as well as we did sign on with Yelp uh, for the golf operations to try to get some more golfers, so and new golfers. Also with expenditures, we did have the ARPA money um, with the HVAC systems, which have been lovely this summer. It's so nice not having that portable <laughs> air conditioning unit in the pro shop, so thank you. Um, but having the bar con at a constant temperature, the kitchen, the office, restrooms, and the pro shop, it's just, it's, it's been wonderful. Next slide. Uh, looking at August through December, so the remainder of this year, um, we have 27 rentals scheduled, seven more outings scheduled. Uh, we have some upcoming projects, uh, the audiovisual that we were talking about for the ballroom in Laveris. Uh, unfortunately, one of those purchases is the fire system that people aren't necessarily going to see, but it's absolutely necessary um, that we just got uh, quotes for that. 
Yeah, we do. We do. Yes, and now that we're putting money into it, I want to make sure that fire gets there very, <laughs> department gets there very quickly. So, um, but then uh, projects that will be bid in 2022, but probably not completed till 2023, is the pump station for the uh, golf course um, that is aging, and, as well as the replacement of the flat roof skylights and exhaust pipe of the building. Uh, we talked about the bridal shows, and one thing that Amanda and I are working on right now um, is surveys and reviews, trying to get uh, people who have had events at Meadowbrook here recently um, to complete surveys, as well as go on to our different sites to do reviews, uh, because those are necessary. Um, with reviews, we have anywhere because uh, we have sites on Wedding Wire and The Knot, which we do get a lot of leads from them, uh, Google, Yelp, Facebook. So um, we are uh, trying to find creative ways to get people to complete those surveys as well as go on and um, do reviews for us. And looking on to 2023, um, staffing, again, you know, we are um, looking already at staffing. Uh, one thing that we will bring to you um, is possibly bringing on another person for the banquet side, a part-time person, um, to just help with events um, uh, to kind of subsidize Amanda. She's doing a great job, but if we are continuing to increase, we need somebody else there to either do showings, do you know, be there during the events, um, because we would really like to see those continue to increase. Didn't we hire someone this year for that? That was Amanda. That was. Uh, Mm-mm. Yeah. So, and again, we were just trying, you know, this was kind of our year just to see where we were because we didn't want to overstaff, we didn't want to understaff, but um, I think this would be extremely helpful because then um, Amanda can look more at big picture items as well. So. Well, I actually view that as a, a good thing, mm -hmm. hiring someone because, I mean, we are starting to grow. Mm -hmm. you know, I think we're still in the infancy here, but the truth is Amanda puts in a lot of hours over there does. As you, know, yeah, she does. you know and I I really want to make sure we don't burn her out <laughs> want to retain her and, yes um, and you know and also have other people that know what's going on mm -hmm. yeah yes and then that means more people there during um you know hours when uh golfers are there walk-ins and things like that that somebody would be there that hours would be staggered so does she stay for the events? Oh, yes. Yes. Typically, yes. Um, if it's, especially if it's um, a larger event, some events are um, smaller, like in the, um, in the uh, fireplace room, it's, a, you know, 10 to 20 people. She may get them started and then introduce them to another staff member where they can, you know, get ice or do whatever's needed for that. But pretty much any of the larger events, she's there from the time they set up at 8 a.m. until they're out the door at midnight. So then I know that's something. Tina and I have talked about this. Um, so then she's there every weekend then. I mean, is there every weekend um, there's an event? W during events. Like if um, we had um, a weekend that surprisingly we didn't have any events. I mean, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so she got it off, <laughs> which was very exciting. Um, there have been times where I have come in to cover um, just because she's had a family event or, so, or again, she needs a weekend off. Um, and we've only had two events on the same night is so something I can easily do. So then how does that work with her hours during the week? Does she get overtime for that or? No, um, so she is um, overtime exempt, which means she does not get any overtime. Um, so she flexes her hours. So she may not then work, if she works all weekend, she may be not working on Monday and then maybe not on Thursday Okay. type of a thing. So that goes back to the problem of someone not being there and I know that's something that Tina and I had talked about um, 
when we talked about bringing her on, making sure somebody was always there. Right, which, I mean, it, it's kind of impossible. I mean, thank goodness yeah. at least um, right now we have the pro shop. So the pro shop's able to give the information. We have information down there. They, they're able to give phone number. Um, people usually do call to make appointments. So Amanda does do a lot of uh, by appointment. Again, it would be nice, yes, to have somebody there. Um, but it just, yeah, right now, there will be two days that she's so not what there. Is, is the position that you're thinking full time or part time? No, part time or? under 30 hours. So it would be under um, the Affordable Care Act. So there wouldn't be insurance or anything involved. Well, I think it's necessary. I know that was a worry that we had from the beginning. Yeah. Saying, I mean, I remember saying, and Tina did too, that nobody would want to work every weekend. So. Yeah. And again, I mean, it, it, it has been nice that, um, you know, we've had some off ones or um, we've only had golf outings type of things, which, you know, she can get them set up and then, you know, she doesn't have to, yeah, so. Um, oh, also um, looking into, um, I would like to see more um, custodial there to, um, for the cleaning of the building, so kind of, checking out our options with that, whether contracting out or, um, again, it's with the labor market, it, it, that is one difficulty. Um, but uh, again, that will be brought to you um, when we uh, talk uh, uh, wages and things like that. The cart lease um, expires in mid-2023, but we're going to have to um, sign a contract here soon. I'll, you know, we're going to be putting it out to bid uh, because there's such a back order. I mean, surprise, right? Um, so we're going to have to be um, bidding that out and signing it. Uh, we do, um, it is going to be kind of limited because our requirements are that the cars have lithium batteries and that they can go 36 holes. Because we only have, uh, right now we have 50 carts uh, with some nice maneuvering, uh, we can rearrange the cart barn to get us 55. Uh, because we're finding on busy days, it's not that we don't have the tea times, it's we don't have the carts. We can't turn over the carts as quickly. So, um, how long do they take to charge them? Um, they, t they take about 12, I mean, a good 12 hours to get the 36 holes out of them. So, again, that's why we want that so they can at least go out twice a day with no charge. Um, and with the, uh, with the cart lease, we are looking at the GPS units, um, which Yes, it's nice for people to be able to, you know, navigate the course with these GPS units, but we also like them because basically they'll shut down if they go off the cart path. <laughs> so again, all, I don't know if you saw some Facebook posts where basically ruts were made, um, you know, some joy riding was had, those can, those will shut down. <laughs> so we won't have that issue. Um, also, we are, um, and this is one thing that uh, once, um, you know, we do get our footing, that programming is going to be next. We're going to be looking at that programming. Um, you know, we talked about bringing back the Mother's Day brunch, you know, with a caterer. Um, you know, and we had great success with the um, Parks Commission's uh, dance party. So, you know, we do want to, we want to continue those things. And that concludes the presentation. I just have one question, yes. Elaine. Since you took this project over, do you prefer bartending or cooking? Bartending. <laughs> There's more tips in bartending. <laughs> but somehow we make less profit. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. And, I, and this is something you likely won't know right off the top of your head, but all because I, I think this is all really great stuff and it, it we can I can see the revenue starting to come in now and that's a good what we all want so I'd be interested to know what um, percentage of this revenue are we getting in that's passive what in other words what you know people are coming to us and saying I want to schedule a golf outing because in my mind for us to get to the next level is where we need to be like you're talking about having another person on staff and things, to have someone actually out selling it, selling us and saying, hey, you know, we, we want you to come here. 
you know, it's one thing to answer the phone and take the calls, which is great, but, you know, are we ever going to have the capacity to actually sell the facility and sell the outings and things like that? I think that's where, you know, we'll actually start making the money. No, I agree, and I think that Elaine and Jack are doing a good job and both working very hard on working on new marketing materials for the outings, for the bridal showers, for the rentals, um, and getting the word out that way, and looking at different venues like Yelp and um, – what else are we doing? Yelp, the Knot, the, knot, the wire. wire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which we do ask on our rental agreements where they heard from, you know, where did they hear about us? Um, and we still, the majority, are live in the community. You know, see it on my way to work. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, yeah. yeah. That, but, we but we do, yes. Live in the community going somewhere else. Exactly, yeah. Yes. And that's why I think the more events we have, too, the more exposure we get as well. So. I know reoccurrence on golf outings, like, for example, the Ensel golf outing was just this past weekend. And then I know Jay McMillan from Shiloh Church came mm -hmm. to me and said, we booked it. Mm -hmm. So that's another this month. plus. So, I mean, we're seeing reoccurrences on that, mm -hmm. repeat b visits, and that's what's important to make them stay here. And I think opening up the cater was a great idea because they worked with, uh, I'll just use this as, as an example, Rob's. So Jay said he had great success with Rob's. Um, Shelly and her staff really worked with the pricing to fit the needs. So I think that's a huge plus too, because when it's all said and done, you know, it's a charity event for them as well. So they wanted to cut costs and make sure that it's gonna be profitable for them, right. for the chararity. So yeah, most golf, well, that pretty much 100% awesome. of golf outings are fundraisers of some sort. So it is, you're absolutely right. And that's what we've tried to help as well, you know, um, by non-alcoholic beverages, allowing them to bring them in. So that kind of, you know, they can get them wholesale and, you know, cut costs a little bit that way. So trying to help where we can. Everybody wants more in terms of information that you provided. You know, give, give me one more bit of information. You know, just add another column to everything. But I want to tell you right now. I mean, thank you for what you provided. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot. There's always going to be more pe more that people want to see. But I think for right now, for what you're doing, it's greatly appreciated. At least it gives us a ballpark idea as far as where we're at and where we're going. So if there's things that we need to look at potentially changing, or redirecting mm -hmm. we have the eyes and the ears and the voice that you're providing essentially to make it happen so thank you well, thank you thank you I for everybody that. that's doing it mm -hmm. working on well and i happening. appreciate this opportunity to you know go in a, a new direction with meadowbrook i mean it's it's been very exciting and um a, a great endeavor so you know i i thank you for this opportunity as well all right. Thank you. I certainly, you will get an email. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you. Move to close the workshop. Motion by Mr. Bachman to close the workshop. Second by Mr. Gorman. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed?